Would you eat synthetic meat? Food production technology has progressed to the point where we are able to create meat analogues derived from soybeans, gluten and other plant products. Beyond Meat products are readily available in supermarkets as well as some fast food chains like Burger King and Carl's Jr. If this plant-based imitation meat isn't your thing, you can simply get your protein elsewhere. Food cultures around the world have heavily featured plant-based meats such as tofu or falafel for hundreds of years. But synthetic meat is not plant-based. It's meat. Lab-grown, artificially produced meat. Thanks to recent innovations in food production technology, consumers may see lab-grown meat in their supermarket aisles very soon. Numerous companies around the world, such as Upside in the United States and Future Meat in Israel, have been hard at work getting ready to bring their lab-grown cultivated meat to the masses. For the first time, they'll be able to say, no animals were harmed in the making of this meat product. Real meat, not farming animals. Instead, workers cultivate small clumps of animal cells in large industrial grade vats over a period of weeks. During this time, these clumps of cells are grown or cultivated into muscle tissue or meat. Effectively, this means that Upside is able to manufacture real meat in this facility without harming any animals. But how exactly is this done? The first step of this two to eight week process is extracting the cells. After giving an animal a small dose of anesthesia, they extract a small amount of cells from it. These cells are then placed in bioreactors large steel vats designed for cell culture applications. Inside these vats, scientists can grow tissues or cells far beyond the cellular level. Inside the bioreactor, these cells are fed an oxygen-rich cell culture medium or nutrient broth to further promote their growth. This cell culture medium aims to simulate the environment inside an animal's body and thus contains nutrients such as amino acid, vitamins, and glucose. This nutrient bath encourages the cells to grow normally as they would inside the animal. Eventually, once these cells have multiplied enough, they turn into muscle tissue or a mass resembling ground meat. To shape the tissue into specific cuts of meat such as chicken breast or a prime cut of steak, Scientists introduce fat cells and connective tissue cells into the culture. This isn't just for show either. The fat cells and connective tissue enhance the cultivated meat's overall flavor. Scientists can even control the nutritional value of the meat by altering the nutrient broth the cells are bathed in during the cultivation process. Despite the massive amounts of progress they've made with their meat manufacturing process, Upside is running into the same problems encountered by the other meat manufacturers of cultivated meat. For one, the business of cultivated meat is expensive. Each state-of-the-art facility required to produce cultivated meat costs millions of dollars to construct and maintain. Couple that with the overall cost of production and you end up with a relatively expensive product that might be a hard sell for some consumers. Thankfully, companies like Future Meat have been able to bring production costs down significantly. Recent reports indicate that each Future Meat chicken breast costs $1.70 to produce. That's in stark contrast to the $330,000 burger patties of the first public tasting of cultivated meats back in 2013. Aside from replicating the nutritional value in real meats, it's also crucial to offer consumers a product that tastes, smells and feels just like the real thing. Upside has found some success with producing cultivated meats similar in texture and flavor to chicken breasts. Other cultivated meat producers around the world have also made significant headway with their products. 
For instance, the Tel Aviv-based food tech startup Supermeats hosted a well-publicized taste test for Israeli food journalist Michelle Ansky. Despite Ansky's refined palate, she was unable to distinguish between traditionally grown chicken meat and Supermeats cultivated products. Once the cultivated meat industry takes off, we may finally be able to rein in the increasing environmental cost of feeding our world's population. More than a third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from the food production industry, with a large chunk of that attributed to meat production. By offering a cleaner, lab-grown alternative, we may be able to mitigate the growing stress our ballooning global population is placing on the environment. Along the way, we might even be able to get cultivated meat similar in texture and flavor to Wagyu beef. That would be quite the delicious bonus.